you guys how are you guys doing let me take this camera back for my y'all know me never never prepare always here and never prepared so you guys we're going to be moisturizing my hair and setting my hair in medium sized twists because i do finally plan on doing something um with jb on this weekend we're already doing stuff with him but anyway y'all my hair is dry tie it to the side it's still cute huh she's been in this messy side bun for a couple of days and so what i'm going to do be doing is layering products that's the best way to ensure that your hair is moisturized so we're going to be using the curls cream brulee whipped curl cream along with cream of nature pure honey twisting butter i don't know if y'all can see that and then we have Echo Styler Gel, hair oil, and I have some spray here. So let's take this bush down, girl. So this is a chit chat video, you guys. Y'all know how we do it. I talk about what's going on in my personal life. I talk about what I'm watching on YouTube or what I'm watching on TV. I've been watching a lot on YouTube, on TV, you guys, and YouTube. Um, look at that bun, that messy bun. Let me take this watch off. I think I have a bunch of bobby pins stuck up in here, girl. Hot mess. Oh my goodness. I've had my hair in this style since we were in for my birthday. Woo. Girl, these are some big bobby pins in my hair. All right. Okay. I know I have more bobby pins than this, so. I'm not gonna be able to talk until I get my hair in the state that she needs to be in because I, I, I gotta focus on this mane right now. It actually doesn't look too bad. And look, to help me get through it, I'm, I have myself a, a girl look. This is just, they don't sell hard liquor and thorny. This is a, 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 what do you call it? It's not dry, it's wet. So this is just a margarita mix that already has a little bit of liquor in it. Anyway, y'all, um, that's cute. I think this is almost done. I don't know what I was doing with this hair. Woo! Honestly, thankfully, I'm very careful with about adding a lot of products to my hair so that my scalp isn't, you know, all itchy and scratchy. So we're going to do some type of part. Not even gonna use a comb or anything, cause first of all, you 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 shouldn't be all up on my hair anyway. So I don't care about it being not being straight, cause you need to back up. Ain't she cute? Yes. So we <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and um put this in sections. So all right, y'all, we're gonna talk about what's going on in my personal life first. Give y'all a bit of a update. It was my husband's and, and my birthday last week. Praise God. Amen. Celebrating another year. It's truly a blessing to be alive. Um, we stayed at the Anatole here in Dallas. Um, I will say that my ooh, my work, my week was very... Uh, it was a very... Even though it was, it was my birthday... The work week was very stressful because I had to interrupt my vacation plans to go back to work. And when I tell you that not only did that upset me, but a couple of my coworkers are, were are very upset that whenever something gets crazy busy like that, I have to cancel my vacation plans. To go. Like we literally had to leave the hotel early to return back to work. I was very emotional about it. I was very upset. I got over it. I went to Longview and celebrated with my family. My mama had a cake extravaganza. Baby, when I tell you my mama had so many pound cakes, first of all, she was naming off all the pound cakes she had made, almost like Bubba did. And um, what is that movie? Um, what is that movie, y'all? When we were talking about all the different types of shrimp on the boat, I was like, Lord have mercy. My, my mama seriously made about, I'm gonna guess 30 different pound cakes. The, my favorite, was she had a peach cobbler pound cake and then she also had the carrot cake was really good now i wanted to try the banana pudding pound cake but i couldn't but she had some ridiculous amount of different type of cakes um and did fairly well all right so you guys i'm just gonna go ahead and 
add some hair oil i'm just gonna do like medium sized twist just to get this out my uh, my way so anyway so yeah we did that had a good time at the hotel regardless had a good time with my family um jb started school this week aim because child when i tell you look as an only child we are jb's friends we, he doesn't have a lot of friends here yet because we're new here in town and so yeah my husband and I were talking about, let me back up, JB goes to a private school out in Heath, Texas. And so my husband was, you know, basically telling me how we need to look into other schools because by tired of paying, you know, for private school. Miss Jackson um, did what she does best. I put in a couple of twerk sessions. <laughs> Um, Vivian, you gotta be professional shit. Um, I convinced him to let JB stay until fifth grade until he's ready to go to a charter school locally. <laughs> so my baby will be staying there till up until the fifth grade. And so that's I, I am very blessed to have someone who can just save. He my husband's really good at saving money and he, he just paid them up front. Um, what else? What else? What else? uh child just visiting the family in general now visiting the, the family is slowing down since school started so we probably we could definitely go on the weekend some girl what the hell is it <laughs> we can definitely go on the weekend sometime but but the visits would definitely be uh reserved for when we have a little bit more time off i'm trying to get them to come up here again like literally my parents are just granted I, I drive fast but regardless they're only an hour away it's not like they're you know over three hours away they're close so yeah one thing y'all that <laughs> people don't know about me i'm a very sweet person i'm very nice i'm very sweet now my sister tried to warn my extended family about me Meaning, because she says every now and then the family, meaning my extended family, are like, oh, oh, uh, Nikki, it's my sister named Nikki, you, you, you mean, you're mean. And my sister's like, oh, y'all think I'm mean? Wait till Vib comes up in here. I'm Vib. Wait till Vib come back. So, while I was back home, my family is very nice. Very nice, very given. They'll do anything for people in the neighborhood. So we pop up because I had to go, um, I don't know what, I had to just drop by my, my father's, my parents' house, and the boys were just there, meaning the grand the, the grandchildren that were boys were just over there with Pop Pop hanging out, right? I could see through the screen door two women just hanging out in the front. And I'm like, who are these two women? I'm like, who? So I I walk in, I'm like, hi, how are you? And they're like, hey. Nothing else. I go to the back room where my daddy is at. And you guys, my father has had back surgery twice this year. He walks with a cane. He is retired early at the ripe old age of 64. He's okay, but sometimes he can be in a lot of pain. So I roll up on my daddy in the back room. I'm like, hey, daddy, what's going on? Who are these women? He's like, oh, um, they're looking for something. They're in the middle of painting. They're looking for a paintbrush, and I got to go out into the storage unit and see if I can find something for them. Long story short, he was saying that these are people in the neighborhood that are always asking him for something or even, you know, asking even for money, even if it's like a few dollars. And they feel bad, so they do it. I said, uh, so what do they want now? They want paintbrushes, but I, you know, this is my father. I don't know what to tell them. You know, I'm just, I, I just, you know, I said, oh, I, I got this. Just a second. <laughs> Let me tell you something. So I go in the front room. I'm like, hey, how are you doing? What do you need exactly? What are you here for? These are the two women. And one of them has to be pushing at least 60. The other one's probably in her late 20s, early 30s. They're like, oh, we're here, Mr. Webster, to see if he can um, find us some paintbrushes. We're in the middle of painting and we, we need some paintbrushes. I said, okay. Well, um, hi, I, I'm Vivian. I'm their oldest daughter. So my father's not feeling too well right now. So whatever you're looking for, unfortunately, he won't be able to get it, for, get it to you right now. They look at me a little bit like, okay, and they just looking around. Oh, let me back up. What teed me off is one of them went all the way back to the back room of my parents' house 
The door was cracked closed. It was halfway closed. She's like, she, this is the woman talking through the cracked door. Uh, Mr. Webster, we're going to go ahead and leave. We want to come back. I'm like, wait a minute. Did she just walk her way in through the house? Like, this is her house? I said, uh-uh. So when I went out to the front room and I introduced myself, and I let them know, my father won't be able to get that paintbrush for you. He's not feeling well. Um, and look, the grandkids, I see JB at, at the corner of my eye, you know, mama eye. I see JB and my nephew on the side like this, looking at them, looking at me. They quiet, child. They, they, know, they know to be in their place. They quiet, right, the grandkids. So I let her know. My father's not feeling well. Um, the grandchildren are here. He's here. He's hanging. He's spending quality time with his family. I'm here from out of town. And one of them says, oh, yeah, we, we've never seen you before. I said, oh, I know you haven't. Hi, my name is Vivian. I'm the oldest daughter. I'd, I'd let you know that. I'm the oldest child. So this is a problem. My father is not 100% well. He's walking around with a cane. He's a nice man. He's going to do what he can for you. But I'm letting you know right now, it's not a good time. Like I said, he's, he's spending time with his family. We, he just doesn't have time right now. They're still looking, like waiting to hear my daddy say something. If he would chime in. My daddy's in the back room, but I know he can hear us, right? And so the older one says, okay, well, we're just going to leave it and go get my phone charger and come back. I said, no, 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 you won't. You, <laughs> you know, you're not coming back. So thank you. So look, I'm pushing. I'm like walking towards them to push them up. I said, so thank you for stopping by. If you need anything else, you know, maybe in a couple more days, a couple more weeks, and my father will be able to help you. But right now, it's just not a good time. Oh, okay. Girl, they were quiet. So look. <laughs> I went back at this point my daddy had shimmered his way he used a back door or something he's in the back in his man cave and so he's like he's still looking for the paintbrush y'all and i'm like he's like so what's going on i said oh, i took care of it he's like they're gone i said yeah they're gone they're gone and they're not going to be coming back here in a couple more days to let you know he said oh thank you so much child when my sister got a word of this she's looking at me like you said that i said what's the problem let me tell y'all something. There is nothing passive aggressive about me. I think people get caught up in the southern accent. You know, I, got, I put my purple lipstick on. I got a cute little face. You don't know. I will check somebody. In a, there's a reason why sometimes my, my friends, now that I know this, my really good friends, will have to give, when I'm meeting a mutual friend or someone they know, I just realized that they will give them a warning of me because I'm someone I don't hold back. I'm very open. I'm very honest. I'm very cordial. I've gotten a lot better. I will say this. I think I have, but you you really don't want to. If I know that you're really taking advantage of someone, I'm also someone that will fight for people. You know what I mean? I'm a Leo. I like to fight for people. I want to make sure people are okay. Especially when it comes to my family, if you don't get your... And to make it worse, I could tell that they were on some type of substance and my father confirmed it and i was like yeah no nah, y'all need to leave one youtuber who is so refreshing and i have mentioned her before that i think you guys should check out is oh steph um oh stephanie and one of her most popular videos is discussing um discussing pretty privilege which is absolutely love her what else what else what else um I am seeing, still again, an increase. It's been increasing over since COVID hit. Domestic violence, this is just, just a trigger. Domestic violence and murders within the black community, young black women, moms, girlfriends. And it seems to be jilted, is that how you pronounce it? Jilted lovers. The last one I heard about was a mother of six and the father of the kids ended up stabbing this woman like over 15 times. It is, there is something about this era of men, this almost toxic masculinity. Um, a lot of these men, especially black men, I'm not even gonna say black men a lot of men in general are not in tune with their emotions they don't know how to they don't they don't know how to regulate their emotions they don't know how to accept rejection which is why you well, remember that that case and I think I'm gonna start crying just thinking about it of the of the ex who who killed the girlfriend and then he threw the baby in the in the lake or the river 
Was that in Louisiana, y'all? Like, nobody in their right mind would do that. But it's happening a lot. It, it's, it's, hap it's increasing. So, it is so sad. It's absolutely just heartbreaking what's going on in our community when it comes to young black women. Um, it, it's just... It's an absolute mess. Noticing a lot of that, I saw a very, very interesting video of a um, young, I think he's British, who loses his memory every 30 seconds. So he's the real life first 50 dates with, um, what is it, Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. That is the sweetest little love story, but it's also depressing to me, so I, I've only watched it once. So anyway, this man who is almost 70, if not, he's he's close to 70, he had herpes, which is normally a cold sore, but it spread to his brain. His brain swelled up, and when that happened, it triggered a, a neuro, neuro, neurological issue to where his memory depleted. And every 30 seconds, he, do, he loses his memory. So he can literally be talking to you about something and in the middle of the conversation, he has no idea who you are, what we're talking about. But this is a romantic story. I'm gonna cry. Y'all, I love love. I'm somebody who loves love. I love genuine love. The only thing that he does not forget is his wife. That is the most, he doesn't remember the wedding. He doesn't remember their first kiss but he remembers her. Six years within their marriage, he developed this. And she's way younger than him. I think there's almost a 20 year gap, if not. Yeah, it, she was way younger. So when this happened, it was almost a death of her future self. Cause there's no kids, there's no, you know, cause he doesn't even, it's like having somebody who has dementia. In my opinion, this is worse than dementia or Alzheimer's, you know what I mean? So anyway, she left the marriage for a while because she's like, I can't do this. I absolutely can't, can't do it. He lives in a group home and all this, you know. A couple of, I don't know how long it was into them separating and divorcing, she decided to come back. And she said, I couldn't do it. Um, yes, I won't be able to have children. Yes, he's not the same, but in ways, our marriage is even better. Because out of everything that he forgets, this is such a beautiful thing, y'all. I'm, I'm tearing up. Out of everything that he could forget, his brain remembers her. Isn't that beautiful? So she must have had that much of an impact, that certain part of his brain. She must have imprinted that much on him that he couldn't forget her. Yo, and baby, now to the pettiness. The pettiness. Honey, I started re-watching the Vegas Gate videos. And many of y'all that follow the Sean Bradleys, a viewers of you, Pam, Shelly Hutchinson, Lady Nika, um, who else? Uh, did I say Sean Bradley, James Carwell, Alexander? So that was a huge group of, I think they were called almost like Sippin' Shade, there was a whole group of them, and they all together, even Rhonda, uh, um, Miss Delightful. It was a whole group of them. So about five or six years, I think it's been almost six years ago now, they decided to go on, to go to Vegas together. Girl, everything was fine until they came home, baby. When I tell you the drama was ridiculously drama, and these YouTubers are, they're smaller YouTubers, excuse me, meaning, Nobody has over 100,000 views. I think Alexander has, right now he has the most. He has over 60,000, but he's not even doing that type of content anymore. What I find interesting that a lot of them, they still going back and forth with stuff. Pam is coloring in her book, which I don't blame her, girl. That's just not toxic. But let me back up. So six years ago, a couple of them decided to get together and meet up in Vegas, right? So like I stated, everything was fine, but when they got back, apparently it wasn't. So the big, big issue that came about was that Lady Nika, who's an older black YouTuber, she's not the oldest, I think, oh girl, look at that. I think, I think, what is his name? 
he dresses he dresses in drag sometimes. I think James Caldwell is the oldest one. But Lady Nika, I honestly thought she was the oldest until he said that. So anyway, y'all, basically, Lady Nika was kind of scammy. Everything from her, they got, I guess they got an Airbnb, a, a room in Vegas. Everything from her trip to there, pitching in for food, um, even when she was wearing, I guess, Sean Bradley, they went to the mall and bought her a whole outfit. She was basically moping and crying around that, you know, just feeling sorry for herself with me. That doesn't, that doesn't do anything for me. I will ignore your ass from here to, I'm sorry, but I will. Cause you don't want to decide to go on this trip with no money and being dusty. If you want to be dusty, okay, but don't, don't mope about it and be upset about it. So child, when I tell you there are a couple of videos about this stuff that I went back and rewatched and I could not, it was a whole hoopla. Yeah, and these videos, even though these folks, again, they're not 100,000 subscribers, these videos are getting those type of numbers. They're getting a lot of hits. And I will say, they get more hits than I do. And I have more subscribers than most of them, but their videos get a lot of hits, so they're, they're making bank, they're making money. Looking at all that, what I'm watching on TV, girl, a lot. So the first thing I've been watching is The Old Man with old ass Je Jeff Bridges. And I wasn't sure about it, because I'm like, Jeff Bridges is dang on there, 70 years old, how can he play, he's playing an assassin. I'm like, what are you doing, Jeff Bridges? You, you, your knee probably got replaced twice during this, uh, the taping of this damn series. But let me tell you something. The old man on, I think it's on, is it on Hulu, y'all? Let me bring up my, my phone, excuse me. The old man, and it has a couple of other no-name people. As the other man that, uh, that played in Third Rock from the Sun, what is his name? John Lithgow. John Lithgow. So, retired assassin having to come out retirement to kick some butt, basically, is what this is all about. But you know who plays in this movie that took me down a whole nother rabbit hole? Those of you who watch The Wire, Chris, that dang old sociopath Chris who was killing everybody left and right, Chris plays an assassin in this movie, The Old Man. Now, he's, he's a little bit older, of course, but he's kicking butt too, and I love the dynamics of his character also. So y'all check it out. It is very, very interesting. I binge watched it in one weekend. American Horror Stories. Let me tell you something. It's a little different, y'all. So, it's a bunch of different short stories that really don't have, I mean, it's called Dollhouse, but to me, they're all a different type of story. The first one really did do with dolls. That first one, I'm a spoiler alert. The first episode, when she made that train move, or whatever it was, that car moved, I was like, she's a witch. I already peeped it. I'm like, she's a witch. I absolutely love the first story. I tried to watch bits and pieces of the other ones and I just couldn't get into it. So I'm like, yeah, I I, I really can't get into it. I, I There's nothing else to say about it. <laughs> Under the Banner of Heaven is so dark. It is really good. It talks about, it goes into, um, I wonder how the people in this denomination feel about this show and i believe they are later later day let me let me make look them up i don't want to read hold on y'all under under the banner of heaven is a mini series that's on hulu and it really does depict the lds which is later day saints um but Within the LDS, within any type of denomination, any type of religion, you have extremists. And so there is a a group within the LDS community that is very extreme. And I'm not going to go for anybody. I'm not going to talk about anybody's religion because I wouldn't want anyone talking about mine. Just look at the show. Yeah, the Book of Mormon. But one of the characters basically tried to say that the Book of Mormon came about it was basically a a love story between the author and a woman he was interested in. So anyway, 
it's very dark and it is based on a true story when i heard that i was like oh I, I need to grow up hurry up and finish this it's based on a true story you guys it's very disturbing and so i'm on episode six i like it so far baby we're gonna get to it we're gonna get to it we're gonna get to p valley only murders in the building when i tell you that dang on martin shark is such a dang on <laughs> Only Murders in Building has such a cat cast, a, a crazy cast. I just love just the overall feel of the see of the of the episodes of this in general. And Martin Short and Steve Martin make a dynamic duo. I absolutely love it. Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez is in it, but you have other different people that show up. Nathan Lane is in it. Um, who else? There was somebody really big that showed up in it. What is the, um, the, um, white actor, the white comedian, Michael, Michael Rappaport. He gets on my damn nerves sometimes. Oh, he's in it too. He plays a detective. So only murders in the building. It is very different. Very dynamic. I love the episode where it's from the perspective. Sometimes the episodes are from the perspective of the suspect quote unquote so i really did enjoy the episode that was from the perspective of a character that's deaf and you no one talks hardly there's no talking it's very quiet it's nothing that was honestly one of my favorite episodes and i really did like that they that they did that so girl p valley when i tell you that p valley is dark i thought it would get darker but it's dark enough so far so um i'm gonna go back i'm a spoiler i will be giving spoilers just to let you know um but we're gonna go and talk about how Haley finally got her ass handed to her um uncle clifford was basically able to buy her out but you know, she was able to, meaning Haley was able to do something because Uncle Clifford checked the bank account and they were short like a over twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> when Uncle Clifford found, <laughs> when Uncle Clifford found that out, he screamed. Both legs came up in the air and he fell back on that couch. When I tell you, I rewinded that scene back so many times, I started laughing. I'm like, this character is so damn extravagant. It's not even funny. Little Murder finally came out to reveal that um, in front of other people that how he has feelings for Uncle Clifford, Keyshawn, Keyshawn, and Derek Ass. I so wish that somebody would kill Derek already. I know that's bad to say, but when I tell you this man, it is ridiculous. So again, spoiler alert, when CPS showed up and Derek is sitting there with that damn grin on his face and Kishan, sorry, Keyshawn is just sitting there rocking back and forth and I was getting nervous. I'm like, oh my God. I'm thinking about, okay, because Haley gave her that gun. Remember, y'all, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, she's going to pull out that gun and shoot Derek in front of all the... No. Instead, she snaps and she attacks Derek. And I'm like, oh, baby, that's it. That's a wrap. You ain't going to never get your kids again after that. You ain't going to... So, of course, she ends up going to jail. Now, she makes a phone call. Oh, let me back up before I say this. <clears throat> I don't remember which, I think it was the previous episode where her and Diamond's ass shared a kiss. But then Big Bone saw it and Big Bone was like, oh, hell no. Uh-uh. So, Keyshawn, Keyshawn is in jail. So, baby girl goes to jail. While she's in jail, though, she makes a call to Diamond. And she, she's telling this fairy tale, fairy tale story, which I kind of like that part of it, too. I like the backstories that they are getting into because they, they did a backstory on Keyshawn and Derek and how he was basically her white knight because she has an evil ass stepmom. Why that lady always playing somebody evil? The, the stepmother, the one that plays her stepmother. Anyway, y'all. So, she basically calls Diamond from, from jail, her one free call, and was like, let's make it happen. Meaning, I need for you to go ahead and take care of Derek, Derek's ass. Yes. So, let me back up some of y'all. Some of the darkness, of course, we know that Diamond is into hoodoo. 
old girl has seven pounds on her due to that due, due to that murder but do you know who's also a bit i think he he's there's a part of him that's dark the manager with the deep voice wody let me tell you something again spoiler alert when he gave old boy that that dosage of fentanyl and then the part of him that's dark is first of all he works for the damn funeral home some of this death doesn't face him but when he got up on him and started talking to him and watching him die i'm like oh yeah you crazy you crazy as hell i i i i, I kind of like it so i maybe i might ass is crazy too <laughs> he's talking to old boy while he's dying i'm like oh you dark you dark you dark as hell so anyway y'all i know i'm all over the place so back to the last episode i watched Haley had her ass handed to her. Barack Obama didn't win. Instead, old girl's mama, um, Maya Woodbine, pa Patrice, oh, ratchet, but she won. But it looks like, y'all, she may have a change of heart because Terrica's stepmama is getting help. And so uh, the mama showed up to um, the dance studio and was basically like, she needs her mama. Terrica needs her biological mama. And I think that made Mercedes feel a certain type of way. I love the fact that, what is his name, coaches or whoever, the the wife paid Mercedes all that money because of the pictures she took of her. And I, I it just made me feel a certain type of way when Mercedes walked into that gallery and saw all the beautiful photos of her. And she gave her royalties and she actually told her that, hey, you get raw basically you could get royalties for life so you basically said look at that ain't god good <laughs> so anyway y'all um we're gonna get to it. we're gonna get to it. i know we're gonna get to it the characters that is still making me feel a certain type of way is roulette roulette and big bone there's always gonna be some someone being this way but roulette I'm like, dang, first you were a crazy ass crackhead and snowfall. Now you backstabbing in this, you know, whatever. So, oh, the girl with the crazy eyes while Haley is throwing up in the bathroom. The girl with the crazy eyes, I shouldn't say that. She's, she's, is a medium. She also does some of that hoodoo stuff, but she's more of a medium, okay? She probably reads cards too. So while Haley is, is bubble gutting on the toilet, she's like, so how do you think about twins? I'm like, girl, Haley, I know you are not about to have Barack Obama's babies. <laughs> uh-uh, but it is what it is. So, y'all, the last scene. Diamond is going to go ahead. He got his kill bag or whatever. You know, I don't, I don't know what, what murders do, but he got a bag of stuff. While he's getting his bag ready, somebody puts a bag over here. I'm like, is Derek that smart to figure out he He's fighting. This two of them against one. I'm like, this fight is not fair. But one of them got a big butt and, and, a, and a big ass. I'm like, who who is this Uncle Clifford? Who is this fighting? <laughs> but I'm looking at I'm like, oh, this is Big Bone's ass. So sure enough, when he gets in that trunk and they take off those masks, it's Big Bone. Big Bone. So by the way, there's also this, this war with the gangs. And Mercedes had it with you know that guy that lives across the street and he's like you need to pick a side and she's like i don't pick no sides you know i work at the i work at the i only choose you know the color paint so i'm like yeah they really do be like that in the hood child i don't know we didn't have we didn't have games that serious I and mean, we had them in the in the country but y'all please diamond got himself kidnapped by big bone shady ass but you know what for someone who is so in touch with what's going on in the spiritual realm for him not to figure out that there was something going on with big bone that means that he was thinking with the meat between his legs and not his head because he should have been able to to figure out there are some shady characters on the show big bone is one lips roulette is another one even the white guy that she's messing with the one that's slanging the pills and the club with the, with the security he's another one too so they y'all I'm like, you, you, all that hoodoo you've been doing and you can't figure out this big booty girl got something going on. So I'm very interested to see what the next episode. Yeah, I know this is going on. I look some series that I am looking forward to, baby. Handmaid's Tale Part 5. I don't know. 
is coming out in a couple more weeks. When I tell you I am ready, I'm going to say this. What do you call them? The governor. The gov we Spoiler. You well, I already know what happened to the governor. But the governor's wife, in my opinion, y'all, she's more of a threat than the governor. Look, with the governor, all, all you have to do is slang a little bit of, of hips, a little bit of boob, some cat, whatever. The governor's wife, I think that she's going to be hell. She's going to be hell for this season. I'm curious to see how it's going to play out. Oh, I'm nervous. I am so nervous. So, y'all, that is it. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of my hair, finish the rest of my drink. I don't know what order that's going to be, but we're going to make it happen. All right, y'all. Take care. Bye.